adventure friends. Thanks for stopping by the channel today. Today we're in the garage and we're going to replace the water hoses and remove the thermostat and do a bypass on a 2020 KTM 300 XCW. Stay tuned. Okay, let's take a quick tour of this beautiful 2020 KTM XCW with the new Decal MX graphics on it. Uh, there's another video on the channel about these uh, beautiful graphics, so take a look at those. Uh, turned out really nice, I think. We're going to be replacing the uh, water hose and the thermostat, uh, bypassing the thermostat on this KTM. And we're going to be using a hose from Tusk. We're not going to be using Samso, uh, Samco Sport uh, that is so popular. But this will give you a view of what it looks like before we remove all the uh, tank and uh, apparatus to get to these hoses. And we'll also talk about the white patch you see on the back side of the water hose there. What it's for and why you probably need it if you uh, have a uh, 2020 and up uh, KTM two-stroke 300. Let's start taking it apart and we'll be back shortly. Well, as you can see, thermostat, uh, the return hose to the cylinder head, and the uh, hose coming from the radiator here uh, all make quite a mess and we're going to clean all that up and put the new hoses in and uh, take a look at um, how we're going to modify this lower hose to keep it from getting punctured by the edge of the uh, power valve housing. All right, so step one after everything has been removed and the plastic in the tank is to drain the coolant and we're going to be using this lower water pump bolt uh, to uh, remove the coolant. So here we go upright the bike just a little bit. It's on the kickstand now. And drain some out. And then we're going to remove the radiator cap, which should let a lot more out. Let's see if we can get this working. There we go. Alright, we're filling it up with distilled water. And we are going to uh, rock the bike just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to drain out the distilled water. Seems to be coming out rather nicely. All right, and then, of course, we want to reinstall the water pump drain bolt. All right, let's start uh, removing these old water hoses here. Just came out. And these, you can see these clamps here are one-time use only, so. Okay, and there's one more water hose right behind the exhaust pipe down in here and maybe you can see underneath here the other part but a lot of people take this pipe off and you can see how difficult it's going to be <clears throat> looking at it from the front <clears throat> got a little more access here Okay, so I am able to get in here slightly with a screwdriver. Thank goodness the clamp was turned the correct direction to allow me to get under the hose, between the hose. All right, now that we have the water hose off, let's talk about this 
procedure just for a minute. Uh, I don't want to get into the debate about whether or not you should bypass the thermostat. Uh, I've done this. This will be the second, only the second bike I've done it on. One was a four-stroke, and this is a two-stroke. I really don't have an opinion other than my bike did run slightly cooler. Uh, I don't normally ride my bike in a uh, extremely cold environment, uh, you know, around Moab, Utah, in the summer, spring, summer, and fall, and then in Texas, uh, you know, as well. So we're not an extremely cold environment. I don't think it's quite as necessary as long as you do the proper warm-up procedure, allow it to go to normal operating temperature before taking off for many reasons, but especially for your fuel injection to work properly and the longevity of your engine. Uh, as you can see, this one hose here is going to replace this hose and eliminate this thermostat uh, blockage, as a lot of people would call it. And then uh, the other hose would go from the cylinder head up to the radiator. Uh, and then the last hose that you'll replace will be the hose that goes from the radiator down to the uh, water pump. So it looks like a good fit. Uh, let's give it a whirl and uh, see if we can get this difficult hose on here first. One thing I like to do uh, to lubricate these hoses, make them slide on just a little bit easier, is to uh, just put just a little bit of that expensive engine ice <laughs> coolant on there to lubricate them just a touch around each end. And that might make them a little easier to slide in place. All right, so we were able to get the lower water pump hose on here without taking off the pipe. Uh, having done it once, unless you have a lot of mechanical experience, uh, I think I would take off the pipe. There is a risk of damage to the radiator by trying to get it on there without taking uh, the pipe off. So. Um, beware. <laughs> this, I think, is the toughest hose of all. And there we go. Okay, now we're ready to put our uh, radiator crossover pipe uh, tube in. And you'll notice it is curved a certain way. So with that curve, you're going to want to make sure that you have it uh, where the inlets are both even. And it might mean turning it upside down. You'll see that uh, once you get it on there. And then most likely you want to keep it away from, keep it away from the cylinder head as well right in there. So be aware of that curvature. And also be aware of how you put the clamps on because you'll be able to get to the screw head a lot easier if you think about the direction uh, they're going to need to go before you put them on there. And then lube each end and slide it over. Okay, now we're on the other side. I'm gonna try to slide this one on. There we go. And making sure our clamp is turned. Definitely wanna make sure, and then we'll have to address this power valve situation right here as well shortly. Okay, well I've seen various ways to address the closeness of this radiator hose to the power valve screw and the edge of that power valve. I don't know, uh, anything you can put in between there should help. Uh, I use a piece of flexible pull repair hose. Uh, just move it over and then wire tie it into place. Um, so I'm sure there are better ideas than this, but until KTM increases the space in between, anytime something hits your radiator, whether it be a water crossing, pushes it in, a log hits it, moves it in, uh, or just vibration uh, right here in this area here, you're gonna have an issue with potentially this water hose leaking and vibrating over time, a hole in it, uh, and leaving you stuck out on the trail somewhere. So best time to fix that is now. There is the Band-Aid. Should hold up for a long time. All right, we're ready to install the upper hose that goes down into the top of the cylinder head. 
And as you can see, it's very difficult to get to. Moving the spark plug wire helps a little bit. Uh, so we'll just have to tough it out. Let's see if we can get it to slide up in there. Now we'll tighten up the clamps to start filling it up with engine ice. Rock it back and forth to get the air out. You heard that air burp there. Definitely don't want an air pocket. I'm sure it's possible, but not likely if you rock it back and forth and then fill it up again. We're gonna put the radiator cap back on it. We have a one with a temperature gauge on it here. And turn it, make sure it's all the way seated, and then we'll put our plastics back on. Okay, now it's time to crank the bike up, let it warm up. Uh, we decided not to put the plastics on it for now just in case we have a leak and so it'll be easier to check for leaks. And then we'll put those on after it cools back down. We check the radiator coolant level one more time. Let's see if she'll crank. Oh yeah. Okay, we're back in the garage and we are checking the level of the coolant now that it's warmed up and cooled down and it is low it is not covering those fins at all so we're going to add some more and top it off and crank it up and cool it down one more time just to be sure that we have the uh, coolant level correct i hope this was helpful to you in understanding how the uh, thermostat can be bypassed and that Tusk has another option for lower priced radiator hoses and uh, how difficult it is to get the hoses actually off sometimes. So thanks for joining us on another edition of Ronnie's Two Wheel Adventures and we hope to see you again soon. Stay safe on the trails.